Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to investigate my custom button panel primitive. Now, what the heck is that? Well, typically, as you can see here, we have uh, button screens rotating on the screen. When you roll over, you can see the hand comes up, so they are indeed buttons. But typically what happens is you, you, in a sense, res these primitives all on the screen separately. You have, like, for example, here's a... And so you'd have two by eight images, and you'd actually keep track of those individually mathematically. But in this case, what we've done actually made one complete primitive. Custom primitives are unexplored territory in paper vision, and they pack a big punch, let me tell you. So as opposed to dealing with eight separate primitives on the stage, you can just deal with one. Boy, that's a savings. Now the cool thing about this particular primitive, though, is that it can be customized. So for example, you can tell it how many rows you want and how many columns you want. If you want eight columns, two rows, three rows, five columns, whatever, you can actually put that into the code. So. So here's a particular primitive. I called it multi-mat plane. Multi-plane, for example, with a material added. And you can have basically a... Let's go ahead and just roll over that. And there you can see uh, the different uh, things. Let's click on that. What I want you to do is, if you're in Flex, control click. That'll actually take you to the primitive itself. Let's scroll down and see some of the properties that we have in this primitive. So that's the constructor function, the multi-mat plane. And you have adjustable parameters. You can change the materials, the gap between those planes, the column number, the row number, the image width, image height, width segments, and height segments. And you have to remember, as you change the number of uh, rows and columns or number of planes that you have in your primitive, you have to make sure that the materials are matching up with that. And I'll say a few words about that in a moment. Just a note of caution, you know, whenever you create a new primitive, you've got to test it. This is actually working and running in one of our websites, so that makes me pretty encouraged. But once again, things like this have to go through several cycles. The whole purpose of this tutorial is to kind of demystify working with these primitives. So here's all the cool stuff. Uh, you can take a look at the demo at www.professionalpapervision.com, uh, demos, web, button, panel. And of course, you can download this from my Google code at code.google.com forward slash p flex 3 cookbook one downloads list and download the button panel primitive dot zip and of course we're doing the YouTube right now so how was this made well the first thing I did is I made a copy of the plane primitive and I renamed the class or constructor and I'm and in my case I called it multi map plane you can call it whatever you want and the next thing I did was in the public class multi map plane I added the properties that you need to instance to conclude the row number, the column number, and the materials. Let me show that to you real quick. So I'll bring Flex back up. So as I said at the beginning, you're going to create a class, and I called it multi mat plane. And then you're going to come along here and you're going to make sure that constructor is named multi mat plane as well. And just above that constructor function, make sure that you add all your new properties in, whatever you want. And in my case, we used uh, basically segments H and W. Gap, horizontal number, vertical number, that's the row and column number, and whatever parameters I needed from then. Okay, let's continue. So in step three, uh, then uh, I had to make sure the variables are carried over into the constructor. That's pretty self-explanatory. And in step four, we open up the cube primitive, and we see how the different sides were made. Now, I'm not going to use a cube primitive, because that's kind of stuck in stone, but I want to start with something new. So I start with the plane, and I start to look and see how the cube primitive was made, and I use those ideas with the plane to create these multi-sides. So basically, it's kind of like the cube primitive, but instead I generalized it, so you have multi-sides and different geometries. Then after porting the cube code that I needed to create my functions with, uh, then I create the heart of the class. And what is the heart of the class? Actually generating the different planes on stage. So what the cube program does, it just throws different planes on the stage. And so I did the same thing here, but I threw them in different positions, essentially. But I generalized it so I could have as many planes as I want, as many column numbers, as many vertical numbers. And here's the real heart I said is the uh, build multi-plane. And the build multi-plane just, throw, like I said, once again, throws different planes in different positions. And then since I believe this is my vertical number, and here's my horizontal number, and right here, I'm actually naming my materials. Really important for the particular class is that you name those materials so you can use that with the material class. And I called it my mat. And here's the N for the vertical number and M for the horizontal number. And that was actually fairly easy to do. And so as I use that cube code, I want to kind of keep it as close to the code as possible. A really good hacking principle to remember is the closer you are to the code that's already there, the more likely it will run. Okay. So keep the code very similar to the cube code port. So I kept the code as similar to the cube as possible. 
and in some instances I just had to replace u variables with x variables and v variables with y variables and here was the big trick it's the vertices push that you had to change I got rid of the planes vertices dot push and new vertices 3d x y 0 and I replaced it by essentially what was in the cube code and the big trick here was to take the u v and replace it with x y and once I did that I was able to push those vertices sets in just like the planes do and keep track of everything that was going on. So that was the big trick. Go through the code and play around with it. I think you'll find it really simple. Uh, I did anyway. So a little bit of work here, but now you are set to go. And you can do a lot of things like make single primitive carousels, image balls, and terrains, all in one primitive. Now, how cool is that? Uh, just a few things about the material list. Uh, one thing you do, you have to have a material list, and you can see right here is my material list very similar to the cube material list except you see my own names. And these are the names that were generated actually in the code as I create the different planes 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 and that's a row and then the, you start with the next row. So you've got to make sure in a sense that these names match up with the materials that you have in your primitives or you won't see anything on the screen. So the next thing is how do I get interactivity? I want to click on a plane I want a URL to come up. I'm going to show you that real quick. Let's bring up the uh, application. So here's my spinning primitive and when I click on an icon up, up comes a website. Isn't that cool? And there you have it. It worked just fine. I'm glad it worked. <laughs> and it usually does. So I usually don't have any problems with it. But that's the whole thing behind it. And so how do you make that happen? How do you get that interactivity? And the thing about it is you need to just name the bitmap material. In that case I just named it my mat 0, 0 which is the name of what was created inside the uh, primitive. And how do I make it interactive when I click on it? Well I create a switch case. So when I click on the plane, it looks for the name, and when I hit it, it brings up that URL. Isn't that cool? Super, super cool. Very easy to do as well. Go ahead and download the code from the link provided in the blog, and check it out. It's really easy to work with. So here we are in the book blog, and I provide the same explanation in the blog, so you can read it. And at the bottom, if you come down here to more, you'll click on that. I provide all the code for the multiplane, or you can download the code from the uh, link and go ahead and look at the class. Uh, in the primitives folder of multi mat plane. So there you have it. That's uh, that's all we have for today. And there you have it. Uh, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University and Wiley Publishing.